Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C and HIV are three blood-borne diseases which are a concern in the workplace. But what is a blood-borne disease? How can it be passed from one person to another? What can you do to reduce your risk of exposure? And what should you do if you may have been exposed to a blood-borne disease? Blood-borne pathogens are microorganisms which are present in human blood and can cause infection and disease in people who are exposed to blood containing the pathogen. Blood-borne pathogens can be transmitted through contact with contaminated blood or other infected bodily fluids including semen, vaginal secretions and cerebrospinal fluid. There are many different diseases which can be caused by blood-borne pathogens. Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C and HIV are three well-known examples. Hepatitis B is a blood-borne virus which affects the liver. If you become infected with Hepatitis B, you may develop symptoms no more serious than the flu. A small percentage of people infected with Hepatitis B become carriers, but show no symptoms. Hepatitis B can cause you to be ill for a long time, from weeks to a lifetime. If chronic, it can lead to cirrhosis, which is fibrotic scarring of the liver and liver cancer. However, the mortality rate from Hepatitis B is quite low. The good news about Hepatitis B is you can be vaccinated against this virus either before exposure or immediately after exposure. Hepatitis C is also a blood-borne virus which affects the liver. Many people infected with Hepatitis C experience no noticeable symptoms. However, if long-term hepatitis develops, this can result later in cirrhosis and liver cancer. There is no vaccine against Hepatitis C but treatment methods for infection are usually very effective. The human immunodeficiency virus affects the human immune system. An HIV infection is obviously a serious concern, particularly when it develops into AIDS, the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. HIV AIDS primarily affects you by making you more susceptible to other opportunistic infections such as pneumonias, TB and various cancers. However, since the introduction of highly active antiretroviral therapy, the virus can be more effectively managed. There is no vaccine available for HIV. If you have direct blood-to-blood -blood contact with infected blood, it does not necessarily mean that you will become infected. It is, however, true that you are much more likely to be infected with blood infected with hepatitis B than blood infected with hepatitis C or HIV. This is because there are many more viral particles present in blood infected with hepatitis B than hepatitis C and substantially more viral particles in blood infected with hepatitis B than blood infected with HIV. It is commonly stated that the chances of becoming infected following a single workplace exposure to blood infected with hepatitis B range between 6 and 30 percent. With blood containing hepatitis C, the chance is no more than about 3 percent. And with HIV, the chances are estimated to only be around 0.03 percent, a very small likelihood indeed. Blood-borne pathogens must find a direct route of entry into the body before infection can occur. Generally, this means that the infected material must enter the body through a break in the skin, such as a cut, a burn, a rash like eczema, or through breaks caused by dermatitis or acne. Infection can also occur from splashing of infected material into the eyes and other mucous membranes most commonly the mouth or nose, or from penetration from a sharp object that has been contaminated with infected material, for example broken glass or a needle. Saliva, tears, sweat and vomit 
must contain blood to be potentially infective for a blood-borne disease. Potential exposure to blood-borne pathogens in the workplace is often a consequence of an accident or injury. It is therefore important that both a risk assessment strategy and an effective hazard control strategy are in place to eliminate or adequately control all hazards that can lead to accidents and injuries. Effective housekeeping also improves the overall safety of the workplace. A keen, neat and orderly workplace is a key factor in accident prevention. In the workplace, if you are dealing with blood or blood products, are a member of a first aid or emergency response team, or happen to be at an accident scene where blood is present, it is important to treat all blood and other bodily fluids as if they were infected. This approach is widely used around the world and is often referred to as universal precautions. Other names which are also used include standard precautions, routine practices and body substance isolation. However, regardless of the name, the key is to treat all blood and bodily fluids as if they were infected. To help achieve this, it is ideal to have, in one or more identifiable locations, fluid-resistant personal protective equipment, including face shields, masks, disposable and utility gloves, waterproof aprons or disposable gowns, protective footwear, and close-fitting glasses and goggles, plus a first aid kit. A spill cleanup kit should also be available that includes gloves, pickup scoop, scraper, an appropriate disinfectant, paper towels and plastic bags for disposal. If an accident occurs which causes bleeding, have the victim contain his or her own bleeding if possible. Again, if possible, have the victim bandage the wound to help stop the bleeding and help reduce the likelihood of blood contact. In a serious accident situation, your action could mean the difference between life and death and you may wish to become involved rather than waiting for the emergency response team or medical assistance to arrive. If you do, don't rush in. Assess the risk, consider your health and safety and the health and safety of others. Consider the availability and use of personal protective equipment and you can then at least make an informed decision on the level of risk you are prepared to take. All blood and body fluid spills should be cleaned up. An established written procedure should be followed. Procedures do vary from place to place, but the main principles in the cleanup procedure include secure the area, wear all appropriate personal protective equipment, Gloves are essential and other items such as face shields, gowns and boots may be required. Use disposable towels or other absorbent materials to soak up any fluids. These should then be placed into plastic bags. Contaminated surfaces and areas close by must be disinfected with an appropriate disinfectant. The disinfectant must be applied for a sufficient time for it to be effective. Contaminated clothing can be cleaned through regular laundering. Once removed, clothing should be placed into a plastic bag. Once removed, single-use or disposable personal protective equipment should be placed into a plastic bag for disposal. Once removed, reusable personal protective equipment should be placed in plastic bags and then be disinfected and cleaned according to the manufacturer's instructions. Other items may also be contaminated and again these need to be bagged if possible and then disinfected and cleaned according to the manufacturer's instructions. During the whole cleanup process cross-contamination can be a problem and double bagging should be done whenever this is a possibility. The precise details regarding the use, labelling and disposal of plastic bags, biohazard bags and the use of items such as sharp containers should be detailed in the written procedure.
Arguably, the most important aspect of dealing with blood and body fluids is the wearing of gloves and the thorough washing of your hands immediately after taking them off. Disposable gloves should be put on carefully according to the manufacturer's instructions and then checked for any noticeable flaws. Utility or reusable gloves must be made from suitable material and be in good condition. Glove removal technique is important. Roll the first glove off the hand inside out. Then use the clean inside part of the first glove to remove the second glove. Always wash your hands immediately after taking off gloves. If you have direct contact with someone else's blood, if you think you may have had contact, or if you have been splashed with a victim's bodily fluids, what should you do? The first step is to wash the area thoroughly. If you think you could have been splashed in the eyes, use an eye wash to bathe the eyes completely. For other areas of the body, a thorough soap and water scrub is necessary. You should then seek immediate medical advice as to any further steps that could be or should be taken. Every incident involving exposure to blood or other bodily fluids should be immediately reported to the appropriate personnel within your organisation. Remember, a direct route of entry into the body is necessary for an infection to be possible. Protective equipment acts as a barrier between infected fluids and the route of entry. Blood-borne pathogens can cause disease, but the risks should not be over-dramatised. Following procedures that have been laid down will go a long way to protect you from infection.